If you've ever considered making it a survival kit, you've probably come across these videos where people are making these everyday survival kits in these Altoids cans. And while I would never, you know, make fun of or disparage anybody from doing anything like that, they're a waste of your time. And I'm gonna tell you why. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you as a former Green Beret with 20 plus years of hiking, camping, hunting, fishing, and combat, my minimum requirements for going out on any excursion, my non-negotiables that can make your life more comfortable and help you get out of harm's way. Um, God forbid if that should ever happen. So I'm going to explain to you why Altoid can, tin can uh, survival kits are a waste of your time. So the first time I ever seen a Altoid's tin can survival kit, I was on a deployment and um, we were doing a meeting with the leadership. And as we do, because uh, as, a, as a Green Beret, uh, our whole mission or purpose is to build rapport, establish relationships um, in order to build up the white space for, you know, future things. So we were sitting around with the leadership and this guy, uh, you know, this young lieutenant, foreign lieutenant comes up and he's so excited about it. He opens it up and he's got like fishing hooks and, you know, lighters and all these things. And, you know, and I'm a support, I try to be a supportive person. I'm like, Hey, that's pretty cool. You know? And, um, but I just, I'm, I'm just a practical per I guess I'm just a practical person. I never really saw the, the value in it. Um, you know, I, th I think that's just, a I think it's just too cluttered, I guess. Uh, so I never really paid, paid no vite, uh, paid no mind to it, but you know, I'm a supportive person. If you want to make one of these, we're going to make one just because, Hey, why not? We're here. Let's talk about it. Um, but if you want to make one of those, I would never make fun of you or, you know, make you feel bad for trying to do things that if you think that it's going to give you the confidence uh, to go out on an excursion and it's going to give you that uh, that sense of uh, sense of comfort. Hey, by all means, rock and roll. But I hope with this video, uh, what you'll get out of it is that you you don't need to go to such great length. So a little bit of background. Um, when I was on a special forces detachment, uh, my job as, uh, you know, everybody on a team has a specific role when it comes to mission prep. Mine was the service support. Um, and what that means is that I had to make the packing lists. Um, I had to come up with the load plans and the packing list was I tried to one, keep the packing list as simple as possible, but I keep, but I tend to keep things more the word systematic see i had a squad leader when i was in the infantry i had a when i was younger i had issues with uh the finer details the little things i would i would i would focus on the big picture and i would miss the little things and as a result um you know i would fail in a lot of aspects and my squad leader had sat me down in his own little way corrected me and he said that you know russell you can't have a flashlight won't work without the batteries and a simple analogy, a simple analogy, but something that had stuck with me for to this day. And that was almost 20 years. I tried to take a systematic approach to everything to understand the finer details of what is involved in an operation. And, you know, when it came to making a load plan or a packing list, I had uh, my systematic approach to it was okay for me. As a person, we're going into a combat zone, so I need a uniform. Uniform consists of headgear, you know, patrol cap, boonie cap, you know, our berets, um, a blouse, t-shirt, pants, belt, uh, socks, boots, right? And because we like redundancy, we always have more than one pair, so better to have not need than the need not have kind of thing. Okay, we're going on a combat patrol, now I need a helmet, and I start head to toe. I need a helmet, I need ear pro, I need eye pro, I need gloves, I need my chest rig I, with my magazine pouches or whatever's applicable, right? I need my war belt. When on my war belt, I need my first aid kit, and I need my holster, and I need this. Um, and then all the way down, I got bad knees from, from Iraq, so I, need, so I put knee pads down. Um, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like, you know, I'm a lazy person and I, I don't want to carry a lot of weight. I'm a big guy as it is. And if I got to carry an extra hundred pounds, well, my life sucks. <laughs> and so to, and if something happens, then obviously someone's got to carry that extra hundred pounds on top of me. And so that, that would not be uh, an enjoyable experience for them is I would, 
uh, is I would try to think of things that had multi-use, multi-purpose. And I'm going to go over that with you. So when it comes to a survival situation, you want to make a survival kit. You need to, what I recommend you do is you think about your priorities of work. In the survival priorities of work, we always want to start with fire. We want to, we want to focus on fire being our number one priority for a couple reasons. If it's cold like it is now where it's below 20 degrees and we have like these ice storms, I'm in Kentucky, uh, we have these ice storms and you know everything's shut down and everything's just a sh block sheet of ice um, you know, and we're caught out in that. Obviously, we want to be able to make a fire so we, we stay warm and we don't catch hypothermia or pneumonia and die. So fire brings about a sense of like a psychological effect that gives us a, a, a sense of security, a sense of safety and wards off animals it um you know we can use it for signaling uh we can cook food with it we can boil water with it so that we can sustain ourselves so fire is a top priority the next one i would uh i would suggest as priorities of work is shelter again getting us out of the elements keeping us you know insulating us keeping us warm and giving us a sense of security uh so that we can self-sustain ourselves and move and be able to move forward Next one would be food, uh, would be water because uh, we need to be able to hydrate ourselves, especially if it's hot out. Uh, lack of water will be detrimental to our bodies and you know our very own survival for that matter. And then last is food. Now, if you're like me and you got a lot of insulation, you can go a little bit without food. It sucks. Um, going without food for long periods of time sucks. You know, if you're a little bit leaner than myself, you know, you only have one chin, then you're going to, you know, be a little, you probably need to eat soon, but you can live a little bit longer without food than you can with water. So that's why we place the um, food below water. Now, what I recommend for these is I don't recommend a tin can with every little freaking thing you think you're going to need for survival. You know, all of those priorities of work that we mentioned, I don't recommend you putting all of that into one tin can. Reason being is because a lot of them, a lot of the items you're already going to have on you, or at least you should, is part of your pack, and we'll talk about that later. So this can should only be like the little things that might improve your situation. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fire kit. So let's talk about what we can put into our fire kit. Again, we want to think of things that are going to give us more than one application or longevity. We want to think about the future. And if one should fail, we want to have redundancy. When it comes to redundancy, remember that two is one and one is none. So the first thing I have in my tin can is I have some char cloth. Char cloth is extremely easy to make. Put as much as you want on there. It's not like it takes up that much room. But char cloth is something that's extremely easy to make. I understand that you might not know how to make it, which I will post a link to a video where I will show you how to make it. But it's so easy to make that it should be uh, a part of your kit and no excuse for it not being a part of your kit. Okay? I have a lighter. Now... I considered why would I put a lighter in rather than waterproof matches? Well, I gave it some thought, and for a couple reasons, I would choose a lighter over waterproof matches. I know a lot of people would be like, oh, put those Strike Anywhere matches in there, whatever. If this box gets ruined, I lose my ability to strike a match. So, okay, well, then you can just use Strike Anywhere matches. Fine, whatever. I only have 40 in here. Have you ever struck a match and then the wind blew it out? How frustrating is that? Or have you ever tried to strike a match and it breaks? How frustrating is that? Well, I only have 40, and once those are done, those are done. They're, they're a one-and-done deal. Versus if I use a lighter, I have longevity. I have more than 40 strikes, and it's to me, it's more reliable. If the wind blows it out, I just strike it again. No big deal. If it gets, if it runs out of fuel, I can still use it to help me make my fires. Again, I will post a link to a video showing how to do that. So 
longevity. I have some jute twine here. Jute twine is an, is an excellent source of natural fibrous material that if you undo it, it will help um, to, uh, it, it'll help start your fire. I have a magnesium strip. Magnesium strips are so easy to use, so incredibly easy to use. You, and it's sort of, and you, have, you get two for one off of these things. One, they're, well, one, they're compact, uh, but, but, but what you get out of them is you get a uh, flash tinder material being the magnesium, and then you get a ferro rod to get the spark, to create the spark. The spark you can use on the jute twine, you can use on the char cloth, you can use on anything. Okay, and these last fairly decent amount of time. I can also use flint and steel, again, to create a spark for my char material. So looking at it, so, you know, in a, with, a, with the eye of uh, multi-purpose, multi-use, longevity, and simplicity, not everybody knows what flint is. Not everybody has access to flint. Uh, you can buy it, sure, but not everybody has access to it. So... Where, where it's cool to have and it'd be nice to have, practice with, uh, by all means, practice with it, get familiar with it. It's just another tool or skill you can put into your toolbox. For our fire kit, we're going to go ahead and not put them in. Again, because if I run out of flint or if I run out of the char material, it's done. <coughs> so we're left with some simple, basic material. Another thing you can consider, we're not going to include it in this, but something you can consider is a pencil sharpener. We're not going to include the pencil sharpener in our kit because we can achieve the same results with our magnesium strip. But the pencil sharpener, if you can find one small enough, by all means, if it fits, put it in there. By all means, do it. I'm not going to stop you. But the pencil sharpener, what's cool about it is that you can take a stick and, just like a pencil, sharpen it and it will create shavings. It'll help you get to the dry material much more efficiently. So then you can create a nice tinder bundle. So by all means, if you can fit it in there, rock and roll with your bad self. But for this, we're not going to worry about it because again, multi-purpose, simplicity, less is more, right? So here we go. I have my char material, which will help carry a spark. So if I just use the ferro rod, I can strike it and it'll hold that spark. It'll work very well. I have my jute material, which is a fibrous material to help with to help carry the flame. I have my flame material, uh, my flame tool, uh, my fire tool that I can use multiple times over a course of long period of time, even if it's wet in some cases. And if it runs out, I can continue to use it. And then I have my magnesium strip, which is super easy to use. Flash tinder, ferro rod, works even when it's wet and a five-year-old can use it. So let's go ahead and put this together. Got my char cloth in there. Be on the lookout for a future video. Put my lighter in there. And then my jute twine in there. Shut her down. Boom. Now, what I didn't share with you is wrapped around my tin can is duct tape. Duct tape is an excellent uh, wick source. So if it's wet out, if it's raining out, and I can't use I can't use my lighter, magnesium strip fails, whatever, I can use my duct tape. I can take a strand, uh, a portion of it, roll it up, ball it up into a, a ball it up, and then uh, catch it on fire, and it will hold a flame even in wet rainy conditions. So I just took a strip of that and wrapped it around a couple times on the bottom of the can. Now I have a fire kit. My first priority of work. So there you have it. Of course, like I said, it's not an end-all be-all. Those are just some suggestions and that's just a fire kit. You can do the same thing with a with first aid material. Have a first aid kit in an Altoids can rather than buying the big bulky first aid kits that you get at Walmart. Take some band-aids and some materials out of that and shrink them down. There's so many things that you can do with it, but the point of this whole thing is instead of using the tin can for the end all be all for your survival kit, focus on one part of your priorities of work. What I encourage you to do is to learn all of the things that you can do with it 
and play around with it and put one together. Now, it, because you stuck with me to this point, and I'm so thankful, I hope you got some value out of that. Um, if you did, I would so much appreciate uh, if you hit the subscribe button, um, like the video, Get that'll help to push the video out to so many other people that could value from this information or find it useful in their lives. Because uh, you stuck with me, I promised that I would share with you my non-negotiables uh, when it comes to what I bring with me every time I go out, whether that be fishing, hunting, hiking, or when I was when I was a Green Beret on combat rotations. So here we go. The first, it, these are going to be kind of like, well, duh, but you might not have thought about it. So here we go. The first thing is gloves. I always have a pair of gloves on me. Why? Because experience has shown me that there's a lot of gross things out there that I don't want to touch. And as a result, I would rather, I feel more comfortable touching gross things with gloves. If you're going through the, the woods, and especially when you're down here in Kentucky, the Carolinas, Georgia, for that matter, there's a lot of vines with thorns on them. The gloves, as you're going through, help to protect your hands from getting thrashed. It's, uh, it's to protect my hands from getting trashed, right? From getting caught up in vines and scratched and whatever that could get infected at a later date and just really make me miserable. Now, next thing that I have with me all the time, and I have more than one, is a tourniquet. This is a cat tourniquet um, that I just I've just had since the military, and you can buy these online. Um, you can get a bunch of them for super for super cheap. They're super easy to use. Um, you put them on your you know you put them on your limb. They have your dial right here, and you just twist until the bleed until the massive arterial bleeding stops. Super easy to use. Train to put them on yourself. So if I get if I get cut, I can just put one on myself, right? Now I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who's bled a lot, but it's not pretty. It's not enjoyable. Well, it was my non-negotiable in combat. I would have a tourniquet in each arm and cargo pocket, and I have a and I actually have tourniquets on each of my seats. So if I'm ever in a bad accident, my passengers have a means to uh, save themselves. So tourniquets, good investment. I have a light source. See, when when I got to talking about these Altoid tin cans, you know, they're putting like pen lights and all these things. And, you know, I found this at Walmart headlamp. It was like a dollar. It's really small. So I was like, hey, for a dollar, it's pretty bright. Pretty bright for a dollar. Hell, why not? But I have some sort of light source. And what I do is I just... You know, if it's not a, attached to my gear, I'll just hang it off my neck like that and just stays there. And then when I need it, I just boop, boop, boop. super easy. No need to put that in an, in your tin can because it should be on your person. I have a, uh, I have a multi-tool. Always have my multi-tool for obvious reasons. Now, another thing that I found at Walmart, thought was pretty neat. It was only like a dollar. It was this uh these ozark this little ozark trail uh multi-tool i mean comes with a little pout little cute little pouch like that um i mean hell it was like like i said it was like a dollar fifty i mean shoot why not and then i have a fixed blade knife by the way i make these and why i have that you know we can talk about knives later, but simple, simply put, this is not, this blade is not for, is not a tool for constructing shelters or uh, breaking through uh, thick material for fires to make kindling because of this hinge point. It, it weakens the, the integrity of it. This is good for like small things, right? I can carve a fit. I can gut a fish with one of these, you know, no big deal. But like for heavy duty work, you need that full tang knife, right? Full tang, meaning from tip to tip, solid steel. That way when I'm really getting into something and grinding on it, it's not going to bend the, it's not going to bend the blade. It's not going to break it. And when I'm bashing on it, it's not going to break 
either. Before in the video, I talked about things that have multi-purposes. Fishing line. Fishing line, you can do a lot with. Fishing line, you can obviously use for fishing, but you can also use this. If I rip my clothing, I can, I can stitch my clothing together. So probably should learn how to sew. One of the common things in the military is we would blow out the crotch in our pants. So I could take this or dental floss for that matter and stitch my, my clothes back together so that I can continue to use that. Uh, I can use for suturing. So if I get a really bad cut, uh, dental floss is similar material to suture thread. And obviously I have um, on a sewing kit, I have a curved needle to help with suturing. Water purification tablets. <coughs> Growing up in Montana and going out hunting, you know, it's different than hunting in Kentucky where you're sitting in a tree or in a, or in a, in a tent on a couple acres, you know, and your farms back that way a mile, um, your house for that matter. Um, and you bring out a cooler of drinks, whatever, sitting in your blind in Montana, you have millions probably of untamed wilderness and you're walking and for days, for hours, for miles. And it's not uncommon that you run out of water and you come across a stream and you need to replenish your water. So a rule of thumb from the military is that when you come up across a water source, obviously I'd have some sort of canteen water bottle is kill one, meaning I'm gonna drink all of the contents and then fill one. I'm gonna put my water source into that stream, running water preferred and fill it up and then I'm going to and I'm going to follow the instructions on this which is two tablets per one quart of water. I mean, really easy to use. It doesn't taste the best. It does not taste the best, but it's better than nothing. This is a cool little device I keep in my wallet. This is a uh Fresnel lens. Fresnel lens for fires. Magnification you know, like when you're when we were kids burning GI Joes and ants, uh, we would do the same thing with this on our char material or our fire source, and it's uh, super easy to make a fire with, and this fits in your pocket or in your wallet. Another non-negotiable is chapstick. The obvious reason for chapstick is because chap lips suck. The second is that the wax in the chapstick can work like a candle and help me with my fire making as well. I do not, I like it is absolute must. And that is a power bank. I know I talk about not relying on technology, but let's face it, uh, if you can use technology, use the technology. Um, but I have a power bank here. I make sure that this stays charged at all times and I have a charging cable for my cell phone. Because did you know that even without cell service, you can still use your maps on your phone. Try it. Put it on airplane mode and track yourself while you drive. It will still follow you. It will still track you. It will still load data for that map area. So if I'm in an area and I need to know where I'm going, I can pop my power bank into my phone if it's dead, give it a charge. Charge on my phone, check out my map real quick, and get myself, get myself to safety. And then the last thing, of course, that we're talking about today is I have a lighter for obvious reasons that we just went over a lot today. So today, um, or in this, in this video, we went through a lot of, uh, or we talked about how using these Altoid tin cans for your end-all be-all survival kit is a little impractical. If you're doing it and it makes you feel good, by all means, keep doing it. Okay, I'm not trying to disparage anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, all right? I'm not here pointing fingers and saying you're giving useless information or you're wasting your time or whatever. My opinion uh, from experience is that rather than make this the end-all be-all kit, because as I said, I already have a lot of material on me, um, would be to uh, focus this kit on one item at a time as according to your priorities of work, like fire, which is what we made today, a fire kit. And even with that fire kit, it's not the end all be all. Those are just some suggestions. You can do, you can put in there as much as you want and whatever you want. If you find something better, share it with me. I'm all down for learning. 
and seeing what you guys are able to put together. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and we'll get you on the next one.